of the year, and that lets you save the okay. care. True form life. Green look on the <laughs> Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. All right, welcome back to another edition of Nationally Syndicated, Exploring Mind and Body. As always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. Whether you're listening on terrestrial radio stations across the nation or as a podcast around the world, we certainly wouldn't be here without you. Now, today we have Jane Sanders, who's coming on as a guest. She's going to be talking about scientific hand analysis. Now, don't get this confused with palm reading. (laughs) As Jane's going to explain, it's very different. She's going to tell us how there's actual scientific research behind this and how it can improve your life. So she's looking towards helping people find their passion in their lives. And I think that many times we don't have a passion. We don't have a purpose. We're kind of just wandering around trying to figure out what we should be doing and this is exactly what Jane specializes in so she's she's going to talk about how the process works how she reaches people all over the world and how finding out what your purpose is will change your life forever so stick around we got all that coming up this is exploring mind and body naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host Drew Tadia All right, welcome back to another edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Heard all about Jane in the introduction. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Happy to be here. It's our pleasure. So today we're going to be talking about, well, basically what you do. I'm interested in hearing more about the scientific hand analysis and then more learning about our purpose because as a purpose coach, I imagine that's what you'd help people find. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's right, so funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, before we get into those details, I'd love to hear more about your background and how you got into doing what you do now. I know it's not like somebody would point at me walking down the street and say, "Oh, there's a hand analyst in the making." <laughs> uh, my background is uh, MBA in corporate work, sales and marketing, and then I was a professional speaker and was um, that business when I had my speaking business lasted twenty years, but. Once again, for the third time, I just hit a wall where I wasn't really happy in the work and got kind of bored, but didn't know what else to do and tried every which way, you know, worked with career coaches, read the books, all that, but nothing was helpful enough. And I was Googling, how do I find my life purpose? Because I really felt that's what I was missing, the articulation of that. And I believed everybody has a purpose. And I ran across a headline for a teleseminar, and it said, discover your innate life purpose. And I was like, oh, my God, this is just too good to be true. (laughs) That's for me. Yeah, that's it. So I clicked on it, and I saw the words hand analysis. And I was like, oh, that's not what I want. I'm serious here. You know, I really want my purpose. And then I saw the word scientific. So for the moment, that one word appeased what I call my anal MBA skepticism. So I listened to the teleseminar and it was pretty credible and I really wanted my purpose. So I got a scientific hand analysis and it changed my life. I mean, I did not know immediately I wanted to be a hand analyst. It's not a job description. That would be kind of cuckoo. But I was so inspired and I knew the information was right. It explained everything about my life, choices I had made, patterns that kept repeating, mistakes I'd made, good decisions. It just explained everything. Um, And I knew if I took action on it, I'd figure it out, which I did within a few months. So that's why I decided to learn scientific hand analysis so I could help people feel the way I now do, which is passionate and excited about my life and my work. Um, And other than that, I'm a horse freak. (laughs) <laughs> um, I love horses. I was raised in the Midwest, not with horses, though. That's an adult pursuit. And I'm in Colorado now and I absolutely love it here. Where did you go? Where did you come from? Or Midwest? So, 
to Colorado? Yes, in Illinois, and I spent a lot of time in California during my speaking business. So I was out there for a couple of decades, um, and that's when I got involved with horses. But that just – that anyway, I needed to move. <laughs> so um, – Colorado. I just absolutely love it here. Just love it. So, and I've been here for a little bit over four years now. So I'm a mountain girl, I guess. <laughs> well, we're up here in, I'm, I grew up just outside of, well, I grew up in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but it's about an hour from the Rocky Mountains. So totally. it's oh, uh, yeah. so beautiful. I, I'm very close to the mountains and I'm always think like I need to go to the mountains more often. So Oh, oh, it's beautiful there. And the the mountains up there are more craggy. You know, they're really more, I think, um, majestic in a way. And I've been to Calgary actually several times. I have several clients there and certainly have been to Banff. Anybody who hasn't been to Banff needs to go. <laughs> no question. All right, Jane, I'm interested to know about scientific hand analysis specifically. Is this – and I, um, I apologize in advance if this is um, – a stereotype. You're going to say palm reading, aren't you? <laughs> Is, what's that? I said, you're going to say palm reading, aren't you? <laughs> Is this palm reading? <laughs> what are you doing, Jane? What's happening no. here? <laughs> well, it, it looks like it. Um, and the roots are from the same place, you know, in palmistry. But this actually is science. The lines in your hands mimic the neural pathways in your brain. Um, and it's so accurate that Forbes wrote an article about me and the work. Um, it's clients use the word mind blowing, you know, fascinating, spot on, freaky, accurate, jaw dropping. It's, I mean, it's hard for me not to use superlatives, which I try not to do, but I can help it. It's amazing. And um, I do, you know, several a week. And every time it just blows my mind. I just trust the information and it's always right. Um you know, people always identify with it, resonate with it, with it, and it helps guide them moving forward. So it um, identifies your purpose, how you're meant to make a difference in the world, the gifts you have to help you fulfill that purpose, and the challenges, the blind spots that trip you up from doing that or just from any aspect of life. So that's what makes it actionable and is so powerful about the work. It not only tells you pretty much everything about who you are and why you're here, but where to take action to make your life even better and to align more appropriately with the the ideal work if you're not already there. So it's awesome. Okay. So walk me through this. When someone says, I want to have scientific, a, a scientific hand analysis session, what do you yep. say? Like, what's the next uh, step? You book an appointment? I, uh, yeah, I take their credit card number, <laughs> <laughs> and then I mail them a handprint kit. So I have clients all over the world, a lot in Canada, Singapore, England. Um, they take their prints, mail them back to me, and then we schedule two Zoom video appointments that I can record the information very reliably. I can show them the markings on their hands that I'm talking about. The first appointment is a full hour. And it's a fire hose of information because everything in the hands means something. So they get the recording of that. They get a summary report and then a 30 minute call a week or two later to give them time to watch that recording because they need that, you know, to really take it in and digest it and uh, have any questions that might bubble up later. And that second 30 minutes is totally for them. However, I can support them to integrate the information, answer any questions, do any coaching that I can. And then some clients choose to go on into purpose coaching, um, where I help them determine uh, ways to express their purpose that will light them up and bring them more passion and, um, you know, feel good in all parts of their lives and work through the student paths to just make their life better. I mean, the the big difference from palm reading, Drew, is that this has no prediction, no predictive element to it. It's not palm reading. Um, the only prediction I make with it is I don't care how good your life is now. You take action on this, and it's going to get better. So when you when you're doing one of these sessions and you're explaining what the, you're explaining what the lines mean or what they say or what they're telling you, yep. is that correct? Yep. 
Yep. Okay. And then how does that affect that individual? So you would say to someone, you, you're passionate about this, it would be beneficial to go in this direction. Is that how it works? Yeah. If something comes up during that hand analysis that would be in alignment for them, um, I will certainly bring it up. Sometimes it takes more digging, you know, because they're blocked or they're just, I mean, I, uh, a hand analysis I did yesterday, um, with an attorney. She just had no idea what else she would do if she was an attorney and she wasn't happy being an attorney. So that's somebody that I would work with, you know, in a coaching package over time to help them figure out some options that would align with their purpose that they would really love and help them get started in that direction. So do a lot of people come to you because they're unhappy with their situation? Yeah, there's a lot of reasons people come to me, but that's the biggest one, just like me. You know, I was unhappy for decades and kept trying different things. This is my fourth career. And by the way, I'm a master scientific hand analyst. That's the highest certification possible. Um, the Another reason people come to me is they are perhaps entrepreneurs who love their work. They're not making the money they want to make. Uh, people getting ready to retire who want to make sure and leave the legacy that they're meant to leave before it's too late. Um, people who are very committed to personal growth and development. People who are curious about what their hands have to tell them. Um, there's a lot of reasons. Okay, so people- once we find our passion or once you help them explain that, what's the next step or, or how do they take action towards following their passion? You know, it's totally different by person, Drew. Some people are already on purpose, and the validation and permission of that from an outside expert gives them the confidence to just really step in it and go for it. Others may be on purpose, but they're stuck someplace else in their life, and that shows up in their hands as to why and what they need to work on. They can try to do that themselves, and some are successful. Others need the coaching help. I think everybody needs at least one coach, you know, all the, all the successful people in the world, regardless of the industry have coaches, whether they're CEOs or professional athletes or entertainers, um, they all have coaches. So it just depends on them. Um, and I just hope they're not like me where they try to figure it out themselves for decades and struggle and struggle. And then finally ask for help. So it varies by person on what's, what comes up in their hands and how they're feeling where they're stuck, what doesn't feel good in their life. And then we focus there and create their own individual goals and plan of attack. Yeah, it's interesting. I was doing, I've always wanted to do gymnastics, if you could imagine. <laughs> yeah, well, and, sure. Uh, I never got, never got into it. Never, never felt like I had the opportunity. I was, I was, I played competitive sports at different levels in different areas, but gymnastics is a place I never really, um, never really took the, I said, may make it a priority in my adult life, I would say. And, uh, I just, I started here in just January. So I've been doing it for maybe six months and there, it's so important. I was just thinking like to have a coach there like this specifically, I have no idea about or yeah. how, how to proceed, how to progress. I know I wanted to do a front flip, for example. So I asked the coach who's there and I said, how do I progress? And then he, he breaks it down for me. And I thought, for business, I'm an entrepreneur and I just thought in different areas of our lives, whether it's finance or business alone, like to have a coach there with you to, to break it down, to walk you through, there's so much benefits. I, I Like for uh-huh. those that have never had a coach, like there's, you can't even explain how important it is. Exactly, Drew. Exactly. I've, since I've started this business, so for the last six years, I've always had a coach. I mean, I just... I can't imagine the the value is enormous, but you got to take action, right? Um, and that's what the coach can't do for you is take the action that you need to take. And I tell people, you know, if you're not on purpose, which most people aren't, by the way, that's why most people don't really like their work. Um, if you're not on purpose, it's going to require change to get on purpose. Could be a little change, could be a big change. I made a huge change, right? So it it's the size of the cliff. The height of the cliff varies by person, but you've got to jump off the cliff and trust 
that the parachute will open and it will, but you will pee your pants on the way down because it's scary. (laughs) (laughs) What's the difference between purpose coach and a regular type of coach or someone that says, I'm a life coach? Is it the difference between a life coach, purpose coach? Yes, there is some overlap between purpose coaching and life coaching, mostly because my belief is that it's so important to love your life and love your work. And the title of my coaching program is Purposeful, Passionate Living. But most specifically, my primary focus is to make sure people get in alignment with their innate purpose, because you know it if you're not on purpose. You really do. You know, something just doesn't feel right. Something feels missing. Life keeps kicking you in the butt somehow. Um, There's just complications. Stuff isn't working. That means you're not on purpose. In some way, it could be a little adjustment or a big one. You know, some people that like, let's use this attorney as an example. If she just feels like she's got the golden handcuffs and absolutely will not leave, then what I would do is work with her to do something on the side and bring in the elements of her purpose and gifts that she's not using now that's making her feel crummy because she's not using those gifts um, and help her enjoy her life better. And perhaps there may be a way to change her job description a little bit or volunteer, create and volunteer projects within her law firm that she can work on that will be much more fulfilling for her. So there's ways around it, but sometimes it requires that old cliff. You know, you, I just don't know until we get into it. And so some, so it doesn't have to be a drastic change, at least at first. No, no. And then there's people that get a hand analysis and they're blown away and they put it in a drawer and don't do anything. That breaks my heart. But that's part of coaching. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that, well, that has a lot to do with how you mentioned action. You, you can yeah. coach people or you can recommend things, but it's the individual who needs to take the action. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's so sad because I know the potential and I know what it feels like to get on purpose and even get closer to it makes a difference. But the overlap is, you know, the, is, 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 is with the life coaching. And sometimes there's a tiny bit of business coaching depending on where they are, but I am not a business coach. And you mentioned about setting goals. This is something that I feel like I don't, like I don't understand not setting goals. I think it I think it comes yeah. to that fear of failure. But when you help your clients set goals, what does that look like? Maybe that some of that will help some of our listeners resonate with the importance and how to go about it. Oh, they're so different. It so depends on what's going on with them. Sometimes and after every session with coaching, there's always homework and I need to think of a better word than that, but I tried. It's just, you know, it's work they've got to do in between sessions. So it could be um, exploring. Okay, so let me do a perfect example. So I'm trying to think of somebody that I was given some homework to yesterday. Oh, yes. So um, to explore, uh, to Google, I don't want to get give anything away, but I suppose if I'm not using a name, that's okay. Um, She is in diversity and inclusion and very high up and is not comfortable where she's doing it. She loves the work, but not the place and is questioning, should she go to another company or should she go out on her own? So her goals for the next, you know, bout of time, which is usually two weeks or so in between sessions, would be to explore as if she were a company looking for a diversity expert, what they would be Googling, what they would be looking for, what questions they would be asking. That's the most part. What questions would they be asking? What challenges would they be trying to um, address that could help her get her languaging around her point of difference, you know, and what makes her different than other consultants or companies out there. Does that make sense? Well, I suppose, so from there, from there, do you set goals and work towards achieving them? Yeah, so I guess that's an action step, I suppose, but um, her, the first goal would be to determine the answer to that question. And that first, which is another company or outside consultant. Okay, you know, so- starting her business as a consultant. So that would be the first goal. And that step is one of the ways to start heading toward that goal to make that decision. 
Okay, so once you've made that decision and you're moving forward towards t- towards the life that you want to live, towards that main goal that you're talking about, what's the next step? Like, how do we proceed forward in realizing or following our passion and purpose? So it depends on, so she's on purpose, by the way. That diversity work, diversity inclusion work, she absolutely loves, which is the indication that she is on purpose. So she doesn't have to do anything about getting on purpose. It's how she wants to express that particular purpose or where she wants to express it. So her goal in terms of determining her purpose are done. Um, am I following you correctly? Yeah. I, well, I suppose, well, that sure. That's specific to, to that. I suppose for our listeners, for our listeners in particular, maybe they are still trying to find their purpose or maybe they're working towards it. I suppose actionable steps always help. So, um, would there be anything that you could recommend some of our listeners could work towards? Like if they're like, this is my purpose, this is what I want to do. How do they proceed forward, whether that's doing something part-time with work or leaving work? What do you recommend for them to get closer to that purpose? It's so hard, Drew, to make a general recommendation like that because I do everything through the hands. So if um, I think what they need to do, if they're on purpose but something's not working – work on what's not working in their lives. So because nothing's in a vacuum, right? So if they love their work, but their relationship sucks, then they've got to figure out that relationship because it's impacting everything. If they're not making enough money, and and this is without having a hand analysis, so I'm just giving some general who knows advice here. So if they're not making the money they want to make, then they probably need a business coach. Right. And then you you mentioned here blind spots is something else that scientific hand analysis can find out. So when you see these blind spots, how can you help them get past it? To to help them identify what action to take. And they get a lot of that, even just with the hand analysis. Um, Every marking in the hands has both master path and student path. Master path is, you know, feels good going with the flow. When you're on the master path, it makes it easier to live in alignment with your purpose and being on purpose, man, that's the only way to that more consistent joy and fulfillment that everybody craves. Student paths don't feel good. It's all the yucky feelings in life, feeling stuck, bored, overwhelmed, frustrated, confused, procrastinating, angry, depressed, money stuff, relationship stuff. All that shows up in the hands as student paths. So it's very empowering because when you find out what your master paths are, now you know what to strive for. And when you learn what your student paths are, otherwise known as blind spots, but they're not so blind. They're going to sound familiar to the vast majority of people. Anybody that has any semblance of self-awareness is going to go, oh, yeah, okay, I knew that. Um, And if you take action on those student paths, that's what will change your life. That's what I did when I got my hand analysis is I started taking action on the big student paths that were really kicking me and knew that if I did that, things would just change. It's subtle, but when you do that work um, and take steps on your student paths to move them toward the master path, um, things just start showing up differently. The more clarity comes. Uh, it's pretty, pretty amazing. How did you find out about this? scientific hand analysis i know you you told us your story at the beginning of how it yeah. changed your life what was the idea behind where you're like oh, i need to give us a try and see if it works well i was bored and hit a wall of didn't not want to do it anymore in my third career so i never was really happy in my work um except the beginning of my speaking business you know the first 10 or 12 years, I really loved it. And I realized after I got my hand analysis that because I was helping people more deeply than I was as, you know, head of sales and marketing for an international graphics design firm, which was my middle career. And that was fun even for a while. But again, all three careers after a time, I would just hit a wall where I knew I was supposed to be doing something else, but I didn't know what. Something was missing. You know, it was like a hole in my chest. I just couldn't I didn't know what that was. And that's when I started Googling, how do I find my life purpose? So what specifically did that session tell you? Like, did it say that you need to be a, you need to be doing this too? No, it's not that specific. Remember, it's not a job description. 
Um, but it did tell me that I, and I'm not using the exact words, but that I needed to help people in very deep ways. Um, and some of, uh, a lot of my gifts I was already using, like my speaking and writing gift. I was a professional speaker. So, um, definitely was using that, but I wasn't going deep enough. That's the main thing. Um, needed to work on some of my, the, one of the pieces of information you get from a hand analysis is called your life school, which is sort of the core, the foundation of who you are, the, the filter through which you experience life and make a lot of decisions. And everything has student paths. So I just started working on the student paths of the biggies, you know, the big pieces of information. And there's even one giant student path called the life lesson. And that's where I really focused. Um, And that was to work on my intuition. And that has changed everything. So there's so many different versions of life lesson and life purpose. Um, Drew, I've read over 1,600 clients now. Nobody has had the exact same purpose statement. Wow. A lot of similar words if they have similar markings, similar gifts, but nobody's had the exact same statement. It's very individual, but it's high level. You know, it's the 30,000 foot view. But as I say that, more comprehensive and more specific than any other way that you can get your purpose. And people trust it because it comes from their hands. It's not something they crafted during a workshop that they always wonder if it's really right. Okay, Jane, as we wrap things up here, tell me what it looks like for someone to, I know you mentioned there at the beginning, but you can reach people all over the world. So tell us mm-hmm. again that how they can find more details about yourself and then the process of having their hand analyzed. Well, the first thing to do would be go to my website, which is precisionwisdom.com, P-R-E-C-I-S-I-O-N precisionwisdom.com. They can contact me through my website and let me know that they um, heard your podcast and I will give them a discount um, because of that. And then just through email, we'll figure the rest out. I'll give them a link to go to my website or they can just buy it straight from the website if they want to do that. But then they don't get the discount. So they better contact me. And this is not a hundred dollar palm reading. You know, this is an investment In the rest of your life, some people charge fifteen hundred dollars for this. I don't. I charge a, I charge a third of that. Um, So my full retail is four ninety seven. But I would be happy to give any any listeners of yours, Drew, a hundred dollar discount. So it would be three ninety seven. That's that's a big chunk off. Twenty percent. Appreciate that. Yeah. So they just have to reach me through my website. Okay, so that's the best place to go. Just head over to your website and they'll keep find more details there. Yeah, I just hesitate giving my email because people, you know, put me on lists and it's <laughs> yeah. not very nice. I don't do that, but it happens. So they can absolutely reach me through my website. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jane. We appreciate you coming on and sharing your expertise with us and sharing with our audience how they can learn more about what you do in, in this service. It sounds very cool. I appreciate the opportunity, Drew. I'm so passionate about this work. I love getting the word out so people know it's there. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. As always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and sticking around till the end. Hope that gave you some insights on how scientific, excuse me, scientific hand analysis can help you find your life purpose. And as always, thanks, Jane, so much for coming on and sharing her time and expertise with us. If you want more details, check out Exploring Mind and Body com. All past shows are going up there. So if you ever miss a show, you can always go back and check out the past shows on exploringmindandbody.com. We do have a free app you can download on any Apple device, which is another way you can hear the show and you can get every show sent right to your device. So head over to your any Apple store and download the show and take it with you wherever you go. More details are going to be at trueformlife.com. This is our main website where we do most of our meal planning, recipes, grocery shopping, lists, and more exclusively for exploring mind and body listeners. If you'd like all that together in a package, it's only $1. (laughs) <laughs> if you could imagine, it's a $99 value. We want to welcome you in for one month for to thank you for your support. 
with the show and to show you exactly what it is we do and how we do it. So if you need any help, if you need some direction, you can certainly work with us for a month to see how it goes. And again, I want to thank you for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Taddea, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.